Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Fall Book Club Picks. I'm Susan McGuire, Senior Editor, Collection Management and Library Outreach at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the captions icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide captions from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates the standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may, at the discretion of the organizers, be immediately removed. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Samantha Slavin, Associate, Mar Mar excuse me, Associate Manager at Macmillan Library Marketing, Emily Ludloff, Library Marketing Associate at Sourcebooks, Madeline Rotley, Marketing and Publicity Manager at Crooked Lane Books, Kendra Martin, Sales and Marketing Manager at Dundurn Press, Lita Engstrand, Director of Communications at Kensington Publishing, and Matt Johnson, Associate Director of Indie and Library Marketing at Kensington Publishing. We'll kick things off with Samantha Slavin. Samantha is the Associate Manager of Library Marketing. After graduating from Tulane University in New Orleans, Samantha made her way back home to New York City and joined the Macmillan Library Marketing team, where she has been ever since. Samantha takes her yearly reading challenges very seriously, ever since her childhood spent exploring NYPL branches and is always giving book recommendations to friends and family. Samantha loves anything fiction, mystery, thriller, romance, and memoir. Thank you for being here, Samantha. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Susan and Booklist. Again, I'm Samantha Slavin, Associate Manager of Library Marketing at Macmillan. I am so excited to be here today. I have a special place in my heart for book clubs. But before we actually get to the books, here are all the various ways you can get in touch with us. We love hearing from you, so please reach out with any questions, concerns, or requests. Next slide. If you would like to download Macmillan eGalleys on Edelweiss, here's how these instructions can also be found on our website. And next slide. Happy Half Hour is our weekly book talking series airing every, almost every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern where we highlight upcoming adult and YA titles and you can register for that and watch all previous episodes also on our website. And next. And we have a huge big book club resource guide. So if you'd like to learn even more about our book club resources, check out this guide. It is also on our website and you can find their discussion guides, sweepstakes, book club news, and so much more. And so now we are ready for the books. Next slide. First up is One Blood. This is Homegoing Meets the Mothers where three women are tied together by blood, love, and family secrets. Potent, poetic, powerful, told with deep love and spanning from the Great Migration to the civil unrest of the early 2000s, this beautifully wrought novel explores three women's intimate struggles with generational trauma and healing. Next. Where There Was Fire, this is a lyrical debut about a Costa Rican family in the years following a devastating fire on their banana plantation. It's the story of a mother and daughter trying to forgive what they do not yet understand and the mystery at the heart of one family's rupture, steeped in jealousy, labor, labor uprisings, and the havoc wreaked by banana plantations in Central America. While this is the author's full-length debut, his writing has already been widely acclaimed and is based on his own family's history. Next. The House of Doors is a mesmerizing novel based on real events from a best-selling book or shortlisted author. Set in 1921, this is the story of Leslie and her husband Robert, who is a lawyer and war veteran. 
when Willie, an old friend of Robert's, arrives for a visit, he threatens a rift that could have life-altering consequences for everyone. Willie is a great novelist on the search for his next subject after years of an unhappy marriage, and as Leslie and Willie spark a friendship, she starts to confide in him more and more, and all of her secrets are worthy of fiction. Next. Above the Salt is from a Portuguese American author and is a novel based on a true story about a Portuguese Protestant seamstress. This poignant and captivating tale is a sweeping love story for fans of Women and Salt and the Four Winds. John and Mary are Portuguese refugees who have fled religious violence and years later reignite their budding romance in Civil War America. This unique perspective on a traditional historical fiction timeline is filled with social jealousies and trials and obstacles are unleashed as the two try and navigate the relationship and have to make sacrifices in order to make the relationship work. Next, Amazing Grace Adams. This debut is the touching and truly unforgettable story of an invisible woman pushed to the brink and her finally pushing back. Grace Adams is stuck in traffic on her daughter's birthday and she is completely losing it. She steps out of her car and leaves it in the middle of the road, setting off across London armed with a cake on a mission to win back her estranged 16 year old daughter. But in order to understand how Grace got to where she is today, we also see her beautifully romantic and touching story of where she's been. You'll cry, you'll laugh, and you'll wanna hug Grace throughout the journey as she's reminded of her importance and has to remind everyone of who she really is. This combines the humor of Leanne Moriarty with the poignancy of Jojo Moyes, yet with a very unique voice. Next, Exodelic. This is perfect for the sci-fi book club. It's an extra extravagant tale for software developers, tech industry types, doctoral readers, and anyone who loved the massive hit movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Here we have a world where artificial intelligence becomes so smart that it hacks the fabric of reality, which sounds a little too real. Adrian Ross is a Silicon Valley middle manager who has become AI's primary threat, and now Adrian is on the run trying to figure out why he's a threat, who the AI, cre AI creators are, and how he can save himself and the world. This hugely fun read spans worlds, eras, and technologies and gives readers loads to talk about with topics that are truly sci-fi yet have a lot of real life aspects in them as well. And next. A Winter's Rhyme has a small town setting like that in where the crawdads sing The Great Alone and Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe. Carol Dunbar is the author of The Net Beneath Us, and like the setting for both of these novels, she herself lives off the grid in a house in the woods of rural Wisconsin. A Winter's Rhyme is a second chance and sisterhood story about Mallory, a 25-year-old veteran frequently experiencing triggering flashbacks from her childhood and is now in a controlling and abusive relationship. But finally, one night she escapes into sub-zero woods and stumbles upon an injured teenage girl asking for help. The two rely on each other and Mallory realizes that she may also be in need of saving. Fans of book club favorites like These Silent Woods and Once There Are Wolves will find so much to love in this one. Next. After the Forest, this is one of my favorites. I am so excited. It is Hansel and Gretel, which was my favorite fairy tale and a retelling is just magical and fairy tale retellings are really having their moment and it is lasting a long time. And this one has the best twist of all. It has baking magic. The magic in this book literally has its own voice, its own motives and cannot be ignored. But this isn't Hansel's story, it's Gretel's or Greta. It's been 20 years since Greta and Hans were trapped in the gingerbread house and it has not gone well. They're in debt, Hans has a gambling problem and Greta has a secret. Their old witch has been whispering in her ear for the past two decades, and the whispers are about the best gingerbread you've ever tasted, which also happens to be their only hope for staying afloat. But can Greta stay out of the town's gossip and suspicion as dark magic is returning to the woods? She can only save herself, Hans, and their town if the magic doesn't kill her first. Fans of Alexi Harrow, Other Birds, and Nettle and Bone will absolutely love this debut. Next. The Porcelain Maker, in this emotionally wrenching love story, a brilliant and talented Jewish architect falls in love with a beautiful and charismatic German artist, and it becomes her mission to save him when he's imprisoned in Dachau. His fate is based on the exquisite porcelain figures that he creates, and she would rather die than live without him. Now, over 60 years later, her daughter is on a journey to discover the identity of her father, the father that her mother kept a secret her whole life. 
The writing in this one is just so lyrical and evocative. You won't believe that it's the author's debut and it's based on a real place, an SS run porcelain factory, a sub camp of Dachau where inmates supplied the forced labor. Next slide. Absolution, Alex McDermott is back with her first novel in six years after the ninth hour, which was a national bestseller. And now the transporting yet topical absolution flips from the present day to the 1960s from Maryland to Saigon with captivating settings and urgent questions about race, colonialism, family, motherhood, and religion. This is for fans of Jonathan Franzen's Crossroads with its engrossing story of Americans at a pivotal moment of moral crisis. For fans of its instant historical bestsellers such as The Four Winds and The Magnolia Place. For fans of Great Circle and Kate Atkinson's transcription for their centering on women with roles in some of the 20th century's most devastating conflicts. And for fans of The Marriage Portrait with its story of a young woman carefully learning her way around halls of power. And next up is yours for the taking. Speculative fiction has had a recent success and this will fit right in with Station Eleven, Severance, and The School for Good Mothers. Here we have a feminist utopia and dystopia with a story about the control and failings of white corporate feminism. This is a queer debut set in the year 2050 with Ava who loves her life but finds it hard to be happy in a world where climate change is rapidly creating an unsafe environment. But there is the Inside Project, a series of weather safe structures around the world that guarantee the survival of accepted applicants. And as Ava begins to work on the project, she and a few other women start to notice some cracks in the system. This is a haunting yet beautiful dystopian story that will leave readers with much to think and talk about. And next up, I have just a few big books that are coming out very soon. So first one is Good Bad Girl. Alice Feeney is the true queen of twists and one of my personal favorite psychological thriller writers. This new book starts 20 years ago when a baby was stolen from a stroller. And now when someone at a care home is killed, four women are snared into a complicated web and must solve a mystery with three suspects, two murders and one victim. If they do, they might just find out what happened to the baby who disappeared, the mother who lost her and the connections that bind them. It's classic Alice Feeney where nobody can be trusted and the twists come fast and furious. And the Connollys of County Down, Tracy Ling's debut, We Are the Brennans, received high acclaim, reviews, book club picks, and so much more. And now the Connollys of County Down follows in a similar path with a new complicated and nuanced family that asks questions about loyalty and trust in a family with really deep-seated issues that also has an unlikely love story and characters you can't help but love. This is a second chance at love story and is perfect for fans of Lori Frankel, Emma Straub, and Catherine Center. And then my last one is The Peach Seed by Anita Gale Jones. This is a multi-generational novel and an epic debut that explores the origins of a South Georgia family's traditions and how its modern day sons and daughters struggle with the legacies of, of America's civil rights movement and the far reaching impacts of the 1800 slave trade. This is We Are the Men Brennans meets the Island of Missing Trees meets Black Cake. And next, that is all from me. Again, here are all the ways you can get in touch with us. So please reach out with anything. And thank you again for being here. Thanks, Samantha. And up next, we'll hear from Emily Ludloff. Emily is a library marketing associate at Sourcebooks. She previously worked as a digital marketer with some of the top names in the music industry in Nashville, Tennessee, but ultimately could not resist the pull of her first love, books. Take it away, Emily. All right, wonderful. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much to Booklist for putting this webinar together and allowing me to chat with all of you about upcoming book club picks for the fall from Sourcebooks. Next slide. All right, my name is Emily Ludloff and I'm Library Marketing Associate at Sourcebooks. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest for up-to-date information, galleys, and free resources. Uh, most of the titles I'll be discussing today are available as e-galleys on NetGalley and Edelweiss, but please feel free to email me with any questions you may have. Next slide. All right, so we're going to start with some classic kind of book club fiction titles coming from our landmark imprint. Next slide. One Summer in Savannah is the compelling debut about what it means to truly forgive from librarian Tara Shelton Harris. It's been eight years since Sarah Lancaster left her home in Savannah, Georgia, 
But when Sarah's father falls ill, she's forced to return home and face the ghosts of her past, including the family of the man who assaulted her years ago. While caring for her father and running his bookstore, Sarah is desperate to protect her curious, outgoing, and genius daughter from her attacker's family. Sarah thinks she can succeed while her attacker's in prison, her, his brother Jacob left town years ago, and their mother, they're all unaware that she has returned. But she soon learns that Jacob has also returned to Savannah, and when their two worlds collide, they are drawn together in unexpected ways. Next slide, please. All right, so the push meets the silent patient with a touch of modern Rosemary's Baby in delicate condition. It is an upmarket thriller that follows indie actress Anna Alcott, who's convinced a sinister figure is going to great lengths to make sure her pregnancy never happens. So while the men in her life refuse to believe a word she says and her symptoms became, become even more horrifying, she can't help but wonder what exactly she's carrying inside her and why no one will listen to her when she says something is horribly, painfully wrong. Next slide. From National Book Award finalist Adele Griffin comes the favor. Nora works at a high-end dress shop and is dealing with her dwindling hope of having a family of her own. So then when socialite Evelyn charges into Nora's life, the women spark an immediate friendship. As Evelyn's stylist and confidant, Nora needs to learn all the new rules of engagement for the uber wealthy. But it doesn't until Evelyn decides that her next cause is to carry a baby for Nora via surrogate, that these rules and this unlikely friendship are tested. Next slide, please. Before there was Romeo and Juliet, there was Fair Rosalind, a Shakespearean untelling from best-selling author Natasha Solomons. The first time Romeo Montague sees young Rosaline Capulet, he falls instantly in love. Soon though, Rosaline begins to doubt all that Romeo has told her. So she breaks off with the match, only for Romeo's gaze to turn towards her cousin, 13-year-old Juliet. Gradually, Rosaline realizes that not only is Juliet's reputation at stake, but also her life. With only hours remaining before Rosaline is banished behind nunnery walls, will Rosaline be able to save Juliet from her, her Romeo? Or can this story only ever end one way? Next slide. A personal favorite from Ashley Winstead comes Midnight is the Darkest Hour for fans of morally gray characters and those who loved Twilight. Um, in her small hometown, librarian Ruth Cornier has always felt like an outsider, even as her beloved father rains fire and brimstone warnings from the pulpit of Holy Fire Baptist. Unfortunately for Ruth, the only thing the townspeople fear more than God and the devil are the myths that haunt the area like the story of the low man, a vampiric figure said to steal into sinner's bedrooms and kill them on moonless nights. When a skull is found deep in the swamp next to mysterious carved symbols, Bottom Springs is thrown into an uproar. And Ruth realizes that only she and Everett, an old friend with a dark past, have the power to comb the town's secrets underbelly in search of true evil. Next slide, please. In Witches at the End of the World, magic courses through the veins of these two very close sisters. For years, they've been all alone, but sweet-tempered Kaya is tired of living in shadows and longs for a life filled with community, even if it means stifling her magic. But Mina is a witch through and through, with wrath always simmering just below the surface. So when Kaya leaves to pursue a new life, Mina casts a curse to punish those who took everything from her. Soon it will destroy everything, including the life Kaya has lovingly built. But once a witch's rage boil, regret means nothing. She can't take back what is already done. Next slide, please. We're going to take a quick slide over to the real world with our source books nonfiction imprint. Next slide. Jillian Lauren had no idea what she was getting into when she wrote her first letter to prolific serial killer Samuel Little. All she knew was her research had led her to believe he was good for far more murders than the three for which he had been convicted. 
While the two exchanged dozens of letters and embarked on hundreds of hours of interviews, Lauren gained the trust of a monster. After maintaining his innocence for decades, Little confessed to the murders of 93 women to Jillian. So Behold the Monster is a riveting true crime narrative that balances the darkness of America's most prolific serial killer and also the illumination of the lives of the women he murdered. Next slide, please. If you're like me and you're more interested in reading about fictional murder, you can look no further than Poison Pen Press. Next slide. So USA Today bestselling author Darcy Coates delivers this chilling thriller that will leave readers haunted. Uh, when a group of strangers is trapped by a freak snowstorm in the heart of the Rockies, they're forced to shelter together in an abandoned hunting cabin. The weather should be their only concern until the first body is found. Someone is picking them off one by one killing for sport. And if Krista can't figure out who she can trust, this frozen mountain may became, become her tomb. Next slide. The next atmospheric dynamic thriller from the acclaimed author, and there he kept her, finds small town Minnesota deputy Ben Packard trying to crack the unsolvable. The murder of a man with more enemies than friends. And as the investigation begins, he discovers the hidden story of Sandy Lake that Packard, the outsider, can't see. But an attempt on Packard's life means he's getting uncomfortably close to a dangerous legacy of this quiet Minnesota town. Someone will do anything to keep that legacy hidden. Next slide, please. And if you're looking for a little romance, let's talk about the new highly, a new highly anticipated one from Sourcebooks Casablanca on the next slide. All right, from Alexis Hall's Boyfriend Material Expanded Universe comes 10 Things That Never Happened. A hilarious LGBTQIA plus rom-com about identity, mistaken first impressions, and a serious case of faux amnesia. Sam Becker may be sunshine personified, but a cheerful disposition is no match for the fierce scowls of Jonathan Forrest. Desperate to avoid a confrontation with the surly git, <laughs> Sam um, panics and lies and pretends to not remember Jonathan or anything else at all. Putting the two of them together into a madcap adventure of second first impressions that'll defy everything they thought they knew about themselves, even each other. Next slide, please. All right, and now on to our Bloom Books imprint for a little sizzle and spice for your life and your book clubs. Next slide, please. The Misses is the follow-up to the number one New York Times bestseller, The Mister, a passionate and thrilling love story from E.L. James, author of the phenomenal best-selling Fifty Shades trilogy. Uh, so Alicia has defied and outwitted kidnappers and traffickers, and she has won the heart of the man she loves. But can she make their marriage work? Uh, confronted by Maxine's lurid past, his forbidding family, and the looks and whispers of London's elite can these two escape the pressures of high society or will their newfound happiness be destroyed? Next slide, please. Another favorite of mine for best-selling author Lucy Score returns to knock out Virginia in The Things We Left Behind. Lucian Rollins is a lean, mean, vengeance-seeking mogul. So Walton is a spitfire librarian determined to carry on her father's quest for justice. Bonded by an old dark secret from the past and the dislike they now share for each other, Sloan trusts Lucian about as far as she can throw his designer suited body. But then one night changes everything and Lucian isn't about to let Sloan get away again. Next slide, please. All right, from beloved Rita, award-winning author, Kennedy Ryan comes to all men's duology, including the Kingmaker and the Rebel King. Uh, Maxon's family and their oil empire have it all, and he wants nothing to do with it. At odds with his mogul father, he's determined to build his own empire. So when Lennox and Maxon meet in a flurry of stars and sparks, this moment changes everything for him. And even though Lennox tries to hate Maxim, their hearts are pointed in the same direction. This in Sonorable pull between them across miles and years will not be denied. Next slide, please. 
And because there are so many wonderful romances, I would love to share with you from Bloom, but do not have enough time. But I mean, I could talk about it forever, but I'm not going to. Um, you can learn more about these titles in this presentation's catalog. All right, next slide, please. All right, and that is all for me. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you again to Booklist for putting together this webinar. Again, please reach out to me uh, at my email if you have any questions. And don't forget to vote for Library Reads. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emily. We'll now hear from Madeline Radley. Marketing and Publicity Manager Madeline Radley graduated from Louisiana State University with a BA in Journalism before completing her Master's in Publishing at NYU. She has previously worked at Baton Rouge Parents Magazine, LSU Press, and Peter Lang Publishing. Her favorite genres to read are true crime and historical fiction, but she will never say no to a good book. Thank you for joining us, Madeline. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you so much to Booklist for hosting this webinar. Uh, my name is Madeline, and I am the Marketing and Publicity Manager at Alcove Press. Um, Alcove Press is an imprint of Crooked Lane Books, so you may know Crooked Lane from our mysteries and thrillers. Um, Alcove launched in 2020 to publish discussion-worthy book club fiction. So we're officially on our seventh season this fall, and we publish everything from historical fiction and romance to literary fiction anything that gets people talking. Um, I'm so excited to tell you about some of our fall 2023 book club titles today, but before I get started, I did want to note that um, all of these titles are available as e-galleys on both Edelweiss and NetGalley, um, and I'll have some contact information at the end in case you'd like to connect about specific titles or request ARCs from me. So let's dive in. Next slide, please. First up, we have The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by debut author Brian Randall. This warm, witchy debut novel will appeal to readers looking for the magic of the particular sadness of lemon cake and the sense of community found in the very secret society of irregular witches. Um, Sadie Revelaire has always believed that the curse of four heartbreaks that accompanies her magic would be worth the price. But when her grandmother is diagnosed with cancer with only weeks to live and her first heartbreak, Jake McNeely, returns to town after a decade, her carefully structured life begins to unravel. Full of family community and a touch of romance, this novel also includes recipes that are inspired by the author's actual grandmother. Um, Brian's debut has gone viral on TikTok a few times now for its practical magic meets Gilmore Girls feel, and Lori Nelson Spielman, author of The Star Cross Sisters of Tuscany, um, claims this claims it is sure to cast a spell on its fortunate readers. Um, reading this one, I just felt cozy and warm and I wanted to curl up with a big cup of tea. So I can't wait for this one in September. Um, next slide, please. Before Eve, there was Lilith. Lilith by Nikki Marmory is a triumphantly feminist retelling of the Hebrew creation um, story in the tradition of Madeline Miller and Jennifer Saint. This is a U.S. debut that tells the story of the woman known as Adam's first wife and her fall from paradise in quest for revenge. Lilith's search for justice drives her throughout history, meeting a cast of characters who are similar, similarly maligned or erased by a patriarchal religion. Noah's wife, Maria, Jezebel, and Mary Magdalene all play a part in Lilith's enlightenment. Inspired by ancient myths and suppressed scriptures, Lilith is a thought-provoking literary novel that asks readers to think about who writes history and who's left out of history to appease the people in power. You can keep your eye out for this one in October. Next slide, please. The Manor House Governess by debut author C.A. Castle is an homage to the British classics with a gender-fluid protagonist, perfect for fans of Emily M. Danforth, not quite K. Maisie, Orphaned young and raised at an all-boys boarding school, Bronte Ellis has grown up stifled by social norms, forbidden from expressing his gender identity. His beloved novels and period films lend an escape until a position as a live-in tutor provide him with a chance to leave St. Mary's behind. He moves to Greenwood Manor to tutor the precocious, precocious young Ada. Ada and her father accept without question that Bronte's gender presentation is not traditionally masculine. Only Darcy, the eldest son, seems uncomfortable with Bronte. When a tragic fire blazes throughout the estate's idyllic peace, Braun begins to sense dark secrets smoldering beneath Greenwood Manor's surface. Channeling the heroines of his cherished paperbacks, he begins to sift the wreckage, and soon he's not sure what to believe, especially with his increasing attraction to Darcy clouding his vision. 
This contemporary novel is a literary exploration of belonging and finding yourself, the lens of the classics that traditionally exclude characters like Braun. Author Kosoko Jackson said, the Manor House governess reminds all queer people, now more than ever, that we deserve to take up space and matter. I personally couldn't put this one down and I can't wait for you all to read it in November. Next slide, please. Pretty Woman meets sex education when a bisexual coder takes up sexting to pay the bills in Text Appeal by Amber Roberts, a daring debut rom-com perfect, perfect for fans of Olivia Dade and Kate Stamen London. As the only female programmer at her firm, Lark is thrilled to land the lead role managing an account for a huge client. But when she accidentally projects a scandalous and completely unsolicited picture from her phone onto the screen during a presentation, Lark is left jobless. When a friend suggests text message-based sex work as a stopgap between jobs, Lark is dubious, to say the least. But she needs the money, and after a few embarrassing and hilarious false starts, she starts to like her new gig particularly one charming and nerdy client who keeps popping up in her DMs. A voicey, hilarious, friends to lovers romantic comedy, Texabeal presents a positive look at sex and sex work with a refreshing take on personal empowerment. This was another one that I breezed right through. I laughed out loud and found the characters to be utterly captivating. It's just a very refreshing and just enjoyable read. And this one comes in August. Next slide, please. Next up, we have The River Runs South by Audrey Ingram. Uh, Sweet Home Alabama meets Virgin River in this transporting and illuminating debut that will resonate with readers who have ever felt just a little bit lost. Um, when Camille Taylor's husband dies unexpectedly, the carefully constructed life she worked so hard to build as a lawyer in DC falls apart. After struggling for a year with her grief, she reaches a breaking point, packs up her young daughter, and heads for the Alabama coast where she grew up. As the salt air starts to heal her, she gets close to a local fisherman named Mac. Mac is passionate about the environment, and Camille soon finds out that he is behind a lawsuit against her father, accusing his company of polluting the fragile ecosystem of Mobile Bay, a lawsuit that is tearing her family apart. Camille joins her father's defense team, but she soon begins to wonder if she's landed on the right side of the fight. Exploring love, loss, and the courage of starting over fresh, this novel will resonate with fans of authors like Christy Woodson Harvey and Mary Alice Monroe. Um, the River Runs South is going to be the perfect book club pick this fall. Um, it's got a powerful message of appreciating what you have before it's gone. The rich Southern setting, a fiercely, fiercely determined protagonist, a reunion with family, and a sweet romantic subplot. And I might be biased because I grew up where the book is set, but you're going to love this one. Next slide, please. Mona Awad's All's Well meets Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt in Lauren Danhoff's darkly humorous debut in which a daughter races to save her mother from a dangerous cult before it's too late. After dropping out of grad school, Linda Glass moves back to her childhood home to live with her mom, who has not only joined a cult, but has also become enraptured by its charismatic and menacing leader, Arlon. When Glinda learns that the cult will be turning her family's home into their commune, she decides to take matters into her own hands by infiltrating the cult and taking it down from the inside. Readers who have fallen for the cult craze and those who enjoy darkly humorous novels will love this exploration of the dangers of cults and the tensions that threaten to tear families apart. Readers will have a lot to discuss with It's Not a Cult, from mother-daughter relationships, narcissistic personalities, and everything in between. If you're looking for a wacky read with a lot of heart, this is definitely the one. Next slide, please. From debut author Noreen Mukis, we have The Misarrangement of Sana Saeed, Perfect for fans of Sonali Dev and Uzma Dalaluddin, this immersive novel reunites star-crossed childhood sweethearts against all odds, only for their second chance to clash with their parents' strict beliefs. The arranged, um, the arranged dates that 33-year-old Sana Saeed has agreed to have failed time after time, and she has responsibilities to consider, namely her sweet autistic younger brother Zia. Sana and Zia are a package deal, and she wouldn't have it any other way. But their traditional mother, won't allow Sana to be named as his future guardian unless she's married. When Daniel Malik walks into Sana's office one day, she's astonished. Their childhood friendship ended with a feud between their families 18 years ago. Daniel may be as hot as a Bollywood heartthrob, but he but not only is he Sana's new boss, her mother would disown her if she ever brought him home. With the top clock ticking, Sana agrees to a marriage arranged by her family. She's seen plenty of arranged marriages grow into love, and maybe that will happen to her too. But when a high stakes case at work forces Sana and Daniel to team up, they find themselves less able and less willing to play their parts of good Desi children. 
Exploring Arranged Marriages, Second Chance Romance, and the Ties of Family. This book is a charming romance with Desi and Muslim culture and characters. Next slide, please. And last but certainly not least, we have The Wind Will Catch You by Michelle Thiel. In the tradition of Barbara Kingsolver and perfect for fans of mostly dead things, in this powerful debut novel, a young woman searches for the truth about her childhood and what she finds forever alters her beliefs about home, identity, and family. Sky Fielder is a typical college student, except that she is a product of the foster care system, lives in a halfway house, and meets with her caseworker on a weekly basis. While failing to balance her grades and erratic social life, she receives a call from the hospital, asking her to make medical decisions for her brother, Ben, who died more than a decade before. Sky must dive into her painful past and unravel the mysteries surrounding her family and brother while deciding how far she's willing to go to have a family and a home again. The Wind Will Catch You is an eye-opening, gritty, and hopeful novel by GLAAD Media Award nominee Michelle Thiel about upheaval and resilience, forgiveness and family, love and unexpected allies, all set in motion by the issues of a by issues of social justice and a broken American foster care system. Next slide, please. That wraps it up for me today. Um, thank you again for taking the time to hear about our anticipated summer or fall 2023 books. Um, if you have questions, comments, or requests for advanced copies, please feel free to send me an email. All of our information to get in touch is here on this slide. Um, and if you want to stay up to date on all of our new and upcoming titles, you can sign up for our newsletter at alcopress.com. Um, and then be sure to follow us on social media. Um, we upload book club guides to our website, so be sure to check those out as well. Happy reading, everyone. Thank you, Madeline. Our next panelist is Kendra Martin. Kendra is a sales and marketing manager at Dunder & Press in Toronto, where she's living the dream as an advocate for authors and their stories every day. She enjoys reading fiction, mystery, and lately nature books. Take it away, Kendra. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Um, we're from Dundurn Press, a publisher from Toronto. We publish mystery, fiction, memoir, and other nonfiction. And our mission is to amplify and elevate Canadian voices to the world, particularly those that have not been represented in trade publishing. We are distributed by Ingram. We're also available from your wholesalers, such as Baker and Taylor and other wholesalers. Uh, so let's go to the next slide and dive right into my curated list for book clubs. So I'm going to start by talking about three novels from emerging writers on our literary imprint called Rare Machines. Uh, and these are all debut and emerging voices, and you're really going to want to get to know them. First up, we've got South by Babak Lagumi, which takes us to this dystopian near future in a desert country reliant on oil production. This has a really detached tone similar to Camus's The Stranger, and it's got hints of that watchful eye in George Orwell's 1984. And this novel beautifully examines uh, totalitarianism, alienation, and over surveillance. And I think South would be absolutely perfect for a book club interested in politics and current issues, looking to really discuss how this literary work reflects on our world today and some of the factors that are coming in to, um, to, to sort of control our actions. So South is going to be available in trade paperback in September, but if you would like a reading copy of this or any other title I mentioned, please either email me or you can request it on Edelweiss. Next. With Mud Flowers by Ali Waterman, this is a debut novel, and we're turning to the complicated world of modern dating. And we're focusing on a glass artist named Sophie, who has recently arrived in the big city. In her circle, everyone is 27 and broke and making some kind of art. And so what ensues in this debut novel is a love triangle between uh, Sophie's old flame, Alex, and this hyper cool poet she meets named Maggie. As Sophie discovers and explores her bisexuality, she ultimately ends up at the end in a polyamorous relationship with both Maggie and Alex. And the three of them are raising uh, the baby that Maggie, um, Maggie conceived throughout the novel. So I think that any book club that read and enjoyed Sally Rooney is going to really love this debut novel. Um, it's definitely that 
Gen Z, millennial, young people finding their own place in the world, but also breaking some conventional dating and relationship tropes in the process. And it's just in a beautiful literary package. Next. So Lump is a claustrophobic domestic story about an upper middle class family falling apart under the stresses of urban life. It brings to mind um, Tom Prada's Little Children or Zoe Whittle's The Best Kind of People. These are stories that explore the dark underbelly of domestic life. So Lump exposes the ugly inner life of Kat and Donovan. They're a set of privileged urbanites and Kat discovers one day that she has an unwanted third pregnancy, that she has breast cancer, and that her husband is a total creep. So this really sets off a chain of events that unravels their picture perfect family. I think there's a lot to relate to in this novel and many book clubs are going to have an easy time sparking discussion from the issues including marriage, motherhood, privilege, illness and class that run throughout Lump. Next. And the Walls Came Down. This is another debut novel. And it's a story about a second generation immigrant family uh, living in low income housing. And the story is told in dual timelines. We go from the 80s to more present day. Delia, she's returning as an adult to the apartment where she grew up, but the building is going to be torn down. And so she settles in to read her teenage diary. And as she recounts and relives her past through the lens of her maturity in her 30s. She sees her parents and their failed marriage in a new light and some of her long long held idealized views of her parents and what they struggled as new immigrants um, really comes to light and this is a reflection on the importance of home and community as well as struggles with poverty and also how to find your own voice. Next. So I picked The Bliss House because I really love a narrative that really moves you along with it. And this one does that for you. This is set in 1960s farm country. And this story is about two young men who have a forbidden love in this highly machismo environment. So they're content on the farm, but their neighbors start to meddle. And so what possibly could go wrong? Well, we have an accidental death, there's a cover up, there's another death, and then these two are forced to hit the road, they're headed north to a cabin in the woods to escape and to make a life together. But it's winter soon and the cabin also has meddlesome neighbors. The Bliss House is a propulsive story of misfits refusing to conform to expectations. It reminds me of a Cormac McCarthy novel um, and it's just a fantastic read. Next. Chasing the Black Eagle is a sweeping historical novel based around the fantastic real life of Hubert Julian, who was an inventor, self-taught pilot, daredevil, and this larger than life figure during the 1920s Harlem Renaissance. So this is packaged in a high action thriller. There's bootlegging, blackmail, uh, feats of early aviation, and it just really gives you all kinds of insight into this early aviation, as well as the Harlem Renaissance, and this really intriguing uh, figure named Hubert Julian, um, all in this really amazing package. Next slide. So next I'm going to move on to memoirs and nonfiction. Wine Witch on Fire, Rising from the Ashes of Divorce, Defamation, and Drinking Too Much, takes us into the sophisticated, snobby, and casually sexist world of wine writing. And so Natalie McLean, the author, she has made her a name for herself writing about wine and pairing food and wine. She recounts in this memoir, however, a particularly challenging year when her husband asked for a divorce, and then she was also called out by fellow wine writers for supposed plagiarism. So as the online accusations came in, there was a, a massive pile on, and there was obviously this misogynistic vitriol that had been building against Natalie that sort of spewed forth. But this is a really incredibly uplifting, it's a forthright story about overcoming difficulty in life. It also reflects on cancel culture, as well as women succeeding in male dominated fields and what they have to um, deal with there. So I think if you've got a book club that likes a good wine and book pairing, this would be fantastic choice for the club. 
next. And Ahid Dashgard is an inclusion leader who works with businesses and organizations in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. And so in her memoir, Bones of Belonging, Finding Wholeness in a White World, she's using her personal experiences to reflect on everyday racism and, and how she has lived um, living as, as a racial minority. And so her goal with these stories and this memoir is to find a space of belonging and wholeness and healing. And it's a really beautiful way. There are some uncomfortable moments for readers, but it's a way to challenge um, and to open our thinking and to bridge the empathy gap. Next slide. So we all lived our own pandemic experience, of course, but for Rebecca Rosenblum, who's a writer and novelist, and she was living in a high rise apartment, she was cut off from people in the busy city around her. And so writing a daily diary was the best way she could think of to cope with this unusual and strange experience. And so this diary, which we've um, annotated and turned into a beautiful volume, it really captures day to day the intimate, the funny, the weird, there's sad stories, there's really hilarious stories that are what it meant to be living in a lockdown in this highly populated area of the city. Next slide. So Stolen Family, Captive in Saudi Arabia, is about all about a Canadian citizen, Natalie Morin, who has been trapped in Saudi Arabia with an abusive husband who won't let her four children leave the country. So Natalie's mother, the author, has devoted over 16 years of her life to get her daughter and four grandchildren home. And so she's sharing that story in this memoir. It's really shedding light on shocking conditions for women living in Saudi Arabia, and I think book clubs are really interested in exploring this injustice and finding more about this um, story and the, the culture around it. Next slide. The Wild Mandrake is a memoir about someone who is trapped by a chronic illness. So Jason Jobin is caught in this cycle of illness and recovery. So he has a lymphatic cancer that won't fully go away. And it's sort of coming up every five years. So he's reflecting on how that disrupts his, his life, his relationships, what it means for um, you know, building a long-term relationship or a long-term career when he will have these disruptions where he's out of action for months on end. And I think that a book club would really love to dig deep into this illness and recovery experience. Next slide. This is for those sports enthusiasts who love a story of how athletes got to the podium. And this is Mary Saunders. She's Olympic gold, med gold medal Olympian. She's for ryth rhythmic gym gymnastics, I'm sorry. Um, and she takes us through her life uh, in this memoir. Next. And in Against the Seas, this is about coping with rising sea levels and how humans have coped throughout uh, history with, with rising sea levels. And it would be great for environmentally minded book clubs. And next, I'll just end by saying thank you so much. You can sign up for our library newsletter at the link. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Kendra. Our final panelists today will be Vita Engstrand and Matt Johnson. Vita is the Director of Communications at Kensington Publishing, where she has been since 2011. She oversees the marketing and publicity for Kensington's diverse list of titles and imprints, in addition to directly handling the campaigns for historical fiction and select key authors. She has been lucky to have launched the careers of numerous best-selling, acclaimed authors, many of whom she continues to work with to this day, including Ellen Marie Wiseman, Donna Everhart, Charlie Donnelly, V.S. Alexander, Amanda Skenendor, and more. Matt, the Associate Director of Indie and Library Marketing for Kensington, has worked in publishing since 2002 in indie bookstore sales and indie and library marketing. Bring us home, Vita and Matt. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Adding to Matt's bio, he also just got married this weekend. I believe so. Congratulations to Matt and thank him for being with us and thank all of you for joining us today. We're really excited for this. Uh, we included first off the bat our contact information. We love hearing from you. Please don't hesitate to be in touch with us. If you go to the next slide, we'll explain some of the things to be in touch with us about. So first of all, the titles that we're going to discuss with you today, we chose them very carefully because all of these books are 
great discussion provoking reads um, with that all of them include discussion guides, author letters, many of them have extended book club kits. And every one of these authors lives for doing virtual and in person author visits. So if you have a book club that's smaller, 10 people, a book club that's bigger, 50 people, whatever, be in touch with us. We'd love to set something up, even if it's just a quick virtual visit. All these authors are really great about talking. They're very good at talking with readers about the themes of their novels and, and doing that in a way that's not gross and self-promotional. I don't know how <laughs> to explain that. We also want to make sure you're all whitelisted for digital ARC. So if you're not whitelisted, all of these books today are on Edelweiss and NetGalley. If you don't have immediate access to them, let us know. We'll make sure you're set up. And we also love sending out print ARC used. We would love to send them to you and get them out of our offices. <laughs> so please be in touch if anything looks good. And you can see our um, email newsletter signups for Branching Out, which is our library and specific newsletter. And that's where Matt gives you the hookup on all the fun swag, promo items, ARCs, offers, Kensington upfront showcase type things, everything. So please sign up for that. And if we've got any indie booksellers in the group today, we've got one for you too called Book Scoop. And I think with that, we can jump into our next book on the next slide. So we're cheating a bit. This is a summer release, I get it. But in the words of one librarian who I don't know if she's here today, Vicki Nesting at St. Charles Parish Library, escapist literature doesn't get much better than this. It is the perfect late summer read and a really great book club kit pick. So The Woman in the Costello, debut author Kelsey James spins a bewitching web of movie land, duplicity, Italian glamour, and the consequences of forbidden love, while also exploring provocative themes of family secrets, ruthless ambition, economic anxiety, political polarization, and the complexities of single motherhood. Kelsey, as I said, is a debut, but she developed her talent for evoking a really strong sense of place during her years as a travel writer and while working for TripAdvisor. So she really transports you to this setting of mid-century Italy at the height of Hollywood on the Tiber as a desperately broke American actress snags what she thinks is going to be her breakout role, the starring role in a very enigmatic horror movie that's shooting on location in a crumbling old medieval castle outside Rome. This one is perfect for anyone who enjoys the moody gothic allure of Kate Morton or Isabel Cañas, um, historical settings of Lucinda Riley, Beatrice Williams. And then it also, because it's set primarily on that movie set, that horror movie set, it gives you that like delicious glimpse of Holly, of classic Hollywood behind the scenes that made you fall in love with the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So we got a little bit of everything in this one and it comes with a wonderful book club kit that will be up on Edelweiss. If you go to the next slide, we also, we love making anything that we can do to draw readers into the world of books like this one. And in this case, we have produced these fabulous movie posters um, for the film that's being shot in the video. And Matt and I also love online forms. So if you scan that QR code, you'll be taken to a form where you can let us know if you'd like us to send you any full size movie posters or any of the smaller postcard size version. Uh, hand them out to your clubs, put them up on your displays, anything you like. We want to send them to you. Yeah? And uh, oh, one day left to vote on this. And I promise I won't do library reads pushes, but we are super close to get library reads for this one. So you got one day left to vote. That's it. We can go to the next slide. Uh oh, I can't. Is anyone else having a hard time hearing Matt? It was yes, working. Matt, it looks like we can't hear you. Can, um, Vita, can you can hear you me now? Oh, yes, yes, now we can hear you. hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, really quickly, let me just catch up. Uh, the Enemy at Home by Kevin O'Brien is Kevin's uh, trade paperback debut with Kensington. Um, and it focuses on, uh, it's a World War II story set um, in Seattle and on the home fronts. And as, is, is as far away from a war novel as you can get, um, it features a mother of two. Her husband has gone to serve as a doctor in North Africa. And she started working at a Boeing plant um, in a sort of Rose of the Riveter type role. And it, the, the novel balances like her work 
with uh, her older son and younger daughter, um, it, with uh, neighbors um, of uh, Japanese uh, heritage who uh, have had to leave their home next door. And it features um, not uh, inconsequentially uh, a serial killer who is stalking and following and harming and assaulting women uh, who are actually taking on the, the roles that Nora, our protagonist, is filling. And it's a terrific novel. Uh, Kevin is a tremendous uh, human being in addition to being a good writer. Um, and you would, if you did want uh, someone to come via virtually or in person, uh, he would be an outstanding, outstanding um, participant uh, in any kind of an event. So it's set in the Pacific Northwest, 1943 Seattle. It's good for fans of the half-life of Ruby Fielding, uh, the unknown beloved. You can see the, the rest there. Um, and We're already yeah. at halftime, so let's go to the next slide. Sorry to jump in and interrupt. I want to oh, make sure. Oh, thank you. you. Sorry. <laughs> ah, Queen of the Valley by Lorena Hughes um, is set in the wake of the 1925 Cali earthquake in Colombia, and um, a photographer a chocolatier who is impersonating a nun for her own safety, and then um, a Palestinian Colombian Colombian nun um, are all like intimately related with this related to this one person who owns this hacienda. And this one person, Martin, has disappeared. And his hacienda has become sort of a uh, ad hoc uh, cholera hospital. Um, but the mystery of where he went and uh, why he is not there anymore is what drives these three people who all have a history with him to sort of get together and find out where he's going. Um, without any further ado, I'll go next because I don't want to take too much time. All right. B.S. Alexander. So B.S. Alexander, the author of The War, I mean, he's just a book club. You can't go wrong with him. Book clubs love him. The War Girls, The Magdalene Sisters. This new novel is set, if anyone enjoyed Babylon Berlin and is as obsessed with the Weimar era Berlin as I am, you will love this. This is, um, it opens in the volcanic post-World War I years in Berlin as a young woman who's a writer uh, is starting her career, starts writing novels and soon for writing the truth becomes uh, blacklisted by the Nazis and exiled just as the fascists are taking control she has to flee her country and her husband who supports them um as she fights for her art and her life and her child this novel is inspired by the true story of Ermgard Kuhn who is someone who I had never heard of before and I don't think a lot of people in the U.S. have heard of yet but very interesting mysterious figure who was a, a writer in Berlin in the years before World War II and who was exiled and then from there, her life becomes very mysterious because some people think she committed suicide. Some people think she snuck back into Berlin. So it's, I mean, this definitely has like a, a literary mystery to it. So if you have any one, readers who really enjoyed, like anyone who loves like the mystery behind um, the Agatha Christie, like the mystery of Mrs. Christie or the or the, Ag the Christie affair, like you'll love this because it has that same real world literary mystery cold case element to it. It's a fun one. We'll go to the next slide. Oh, Take the Long Way Home is a phenomenal uh, historical uh, novel about one woman whose life spans like 1950s cloistered uh, Mississippi town that's a segregated Mississippi town that was founded by uh, freed men and women and it takes her through um, like 80s New York to Paris to Rome and it's about a ton of things uh, the discussion themes and topics kind of list them but it's a lot of it has to do with women's roles and um, the relationship that this one woman has with various men at different stages of her life uh, it's a tremendous read um, and actually, we're going to have air season very soon. So if you are interested, please, please reach out. Uh, next. You'll be at ALA, as, as will most of these authors. So you can, all, you can grab your ARCs if you're going to be at ALA. Um, all right, Anna Bliss. So this is a debut author. Um, at the heart of Bonfire Night is the love story between a photographer named Kate and a medical student named David. 
Uh, they meet amidst the chaos of an anti-fascist protest in 1936 England. So this is a very interesting window onto how disturbingly popular like anti-Semitism and fascism was in England in the years before World War II. I think a lot of us think, oh, the Allies, the good guys, they, you know, everyone was anti-Nazi in the UK, but not, not so. Um, so amidst this chaos, these two fall in love, and despite the intensity of their feelings for another, there are a number of potentially insurmountable obstacles between them. The most significant, of course, is that Kate is Irish Catholic, while David is from a religious Jewish family. And what I love about this novel is so is just rather than taking like a love can conquer all approach, which you would normally expect from a story about this, it examines the complexities and challenges of an interfaith romance in a way that's like so truthful and realistic and unromanticized in so many ways. Um, it really like, you know, these two, they confront and they explore like love in all of its forms. So you've got romantic love, maternal love, creative, patriotic, religious, familial, and they, and it kind of measures them against one another and explores the limits of each. It's just really beautiful, lyrical story set in the years before World War II. So again, really volcanic and, and disturbingly relatable time period when the country was very polarized. Um, and we can go to the next one. Familia by Lauren Rico is ask the question, what if you had a sister and a family that you never knew existed? Um, it, a younger sister uh, discovers that she, through a genetic testing website that she is uh, allegedly the sister of this woman who lives in Puerto Rico. Uh, she's very skeptical about it. And when she goes to Puerto Rico to meet her sister, her alleged sister, um, it, there's very much um, a dynamic of like the skeptic versus a true believer. And as they sort of unravel the mystery of you know who they are to each other, it's just, it becomes a novel about, um, I mean, like illegal adoption <laughs> yeah. and um, you know crime in Puerto Rico and like we, we the can, role. I know of we're out of time. Can we do one more? Can we just do the next slide? Okay, sorry, I'm so sorry to interrupt. That. Okay, no this worries. is. This is set during the Civil War, but not a Civil War novel by Donna Everhart, the book club goddess. Um, this is for readers of Days Without End or Enemy Women by Paulette Giles, and is set in North Carolina as one woman in the sustenance farm. Uh, she's a uh, one woman who's like the matriarch of a farmer family. She fights to keep her family united and neutral during this incredibly divisive period in history. And this. It's Donna Everhart or Everhart at her best. You've got Southern heritage, you've got 19th century farm life, uh, relevant themes, as well as like just this really authentic transporting Southern voice. So she's wonderful for book clubs. We have a couple more slides that you guys can page through in your own time. One that shows you some of our great trade paperback romances coming up. Um, and then we've got some our, our fun cozy mystery program which always has lots of good things going on but you can download the annual cozy booklet become part of our cozy club sign your book club up all that sorry i'm sorry we went over time yeah sorry everyone but thank you for sticking around thank you guys so much it was really a pleasure and an honor to speak with you today <laughs> thank you so much vita and matt that was exciting a finish and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's video recording, title list, slide presentation, and certificate of completion. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like the ones you see here. ALA's annual conference is in our hometown of Chicago, and Booklist has tons of panels, award shows, and giveaways happening all weekend long. Join us on the graphic novel stage for two hashtag read graphic panels, author signings in our booth, including a Jerry Kraps signing on Sunday, June 25th, and panels discussing book challenges, diversity and accessibility in audiobooks, and our new magazine booklist reader. Stop by booth 3729 for details, free swag, and more. See you there. Recently, ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom reported 1,269 demands to censor library books and resources in 2022, the highest number of attempted book bans since ALA began compiling data about censorship in libraries more than 20 years ago.
Join the Unite Against Book Bans campaign to help protect the freedom to read and to empower readers everywhere. Visit uniteagainstbookbans.org for more information, resources, to donate, and more. And remember that you can utilize Booklist to support your library's collection development choices with reviews backed by the ALA. We have a special webinar subscription offer, and don't forget that your subscription dollars help ALA advocate on behalf of libraries, assisting those facing an unprecedented number of book challenges. Email us at info at booklistonline.com for more information. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Macmillan Library Marketing, Sourcebooks, Crooked Lane Books, Dundurn Press, and Kensington Publishing. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.